This story happened to my friend just one week ago. To give you some context, this is the friend that showed me how to get onto the deep web. Now, he's always been really fascinated with it. But after my horror story experiences with deep web hackers, he decided to take a pretty long break. He didn't resume using the deep web until about a year after hearing about my experiences. But he didn't tell anyone. He would buy stolen Apple products, drugs, and so on. Now, about a week or two ago, he was buying some cocaine. It wasn't from the seller he normally buys from, though. Basically, it was really cheap. So he gave the seller his address and a fake email he used, so he could stay in contact until the deal was done. He wasn't too worried. This guy seemed professional, and it was the same procedure for most of his purchases. My friend told him to ship it in a movie case, or something that his mum wouldn't expect to find drugs in. This was probably his biggest mistake. He let the man know he was just a teenager. But then again, my friend isn't the most careful of people. A few days later, his mum walked into the house and handed my friend a movie he'd ordered online. He took it and opened it up. But inside there wasn't any cocaine, just a piece of folded up paper. He opened it up and read it. There has been a problem. Email me for details. At the bottom, the man had left a new email for my friend to contact. My friend got on his email and asked the guy what the problem was. He responded, Something has happened. If I were to send it to you, it could be traced back to me, and we would both be caught. Meet me at the elementary school at seven. We'll just do it in person. Now, the school wasn't too far away, so my friend told his mom that he was staying the night at my house, and he headed off to meet the man. He called me and asked if I could be there with him, but I was really busy with my schoolwork, so I said I couldn't. I did tell him to take a knife or something, though, just in case things went wrong. When he got to the parking lot outside the school, he heard a car honking its horn. He saw it was a jeep, but the plate had been covered up by duct tape, and the windows were tinted very dark. The man got out of his car and gave my friend the drugs, and my friend paid him. It seemed like everything had gone fine. My friend got in his car and sat there a bit, in order to call and tell me that everything was fine. He noticed that, when he'd hung up though, the man was still there. Why was he waiting? He didn't think too much of it and drove off. When he got to the first red light, he noticed that the man's car was right behind him. He started to get a little nervous, but kept driving. When he reached his neighborhood, the man was still following him, so he decided it would be a bad idea to lead him to his house. He instead turned into the next neighborhood and took a whole bunch of random turns, hoping to lose the man. Eventually, he no longer saw the car, so he pulled the car into his garage and called it a day. That night, he noticed the sound of a car engine. He looked out of his window and saw the man's car parked in his driveway. He got wide-eyed and snuck downstairs, and peered through the window. Inside the car, the man was smoking a cigarette and talking on the phone. But in the passenger seat, he also saw a second man. The second one was a lot more suspicious looking, even more so than the shady drug dealer. This second one had messed up hair, a trashy shirt, and, while it was hard to see, my friend could almost make out a scar from a massive burn on the side of his neck and on his face. He kept watching the two men 
until the second man began to look at the window more and more often. Eventually, he was just staring at the window my friend was watching him from. My friend decided he'd had enough and was going to call the cops. He didn't care if he would get in trouble at this point, so he moved away from the window and called the police, who told him to grab a weapon or something to defend himself and to wait for them to arrive. He waited for about five minutes when he saw a figure quietly come out of his mom's room who was still sleeping. This man shut the door behind him and noticed that my friend had seen him. The figure sprinted towards my friend with what looked like a knife raised in his hand. My friend grabbed a pot from the nearby table and threw it at the figure. It hit him in the face and shattered. The figure screamed and fell to the floor. My friend turned on the lights and saw the second man with the burn on his face, rolling around on the floor. His face was covered in blood and shards of glass were sticking out. His right eye had tons of blood pouring out of it. He must have been hit pretty hard. As the man began to slowly get up, my friend grabbed a kitchen knife and drove it into the man's shoulder, causing the man to scream again. The man began to stumble over to the front door, when police sirens could suddenly be heard. Both men were caught on sight, but my friend's mom had been killed. Her throat had been slit, and she had 23 stab wounds and duct tape covering her mouth. My friend was arrested too for drug possession. His trial is coming up. But the worst of all is that he lost his mom because of his deep web experience. So I don't think he'll be buying drugs from the deep web ever again.